Hello again, Gooners. Back in the J-League, not J-League, J-Soccer office, J-Soccer magazine office. It's the loose cannon number 56. Getting good at this sort of thing. Not really. That sign's about to fall on my head. I just can feel it. I didn't I didn't put it up there properly. Alan Gibson's about, but he's... Um, Hello, Gooners! He's in the background, as are the rest of the uh, J-Soccer magazine staff. Um, they're staying quiet, but tapping away on their keyboards and so on. And uh, no bananas, but we've certainly got Pikachu appearing. Uh, that's something for the kids. But uh, for the adults, we've got the Champions League draw. We predicted, or somebody here predicted almost correctly. Can you believe it? Schalke, Olympiakos, I predicted. Then I'll put in uh, Bate, B-A-T-E. Borisov, that didn't turn up, but Montpellier did. And uh, I, I personally think all those trips are going to be quite tricky. Schalke. Might not have 38-year-old Raul, but they've certainly got a certain Dutchman, not Robin Van Persie, Clark, what's his name again? Klaas Jan Huntelaar. Schalke. He's still Uchida. there, right? Uchida, absolutely Uchida, right back, Japan yeah. national team. So, a lot a lot to look out for. And then, of course, Montpellier, they had a, they've got their number 10. Uh, I have to check my notes, because I can never remember his name, but he's supposed to be pretty good. Yunus Belhanda, and he was another player I picked out well, don't laugh, Alan. He's another player I've picked out as, um, as somebody that Arsenal should potentially think about signing. And uh, obviously it hasn't happened yet. And they probably won't now because uh, they're not going to want to sell to a team they're going to be playing against in Group B. And uh, the other team, Olympiakos, is always tough going to Greece and playing these sort of games, isn't it? Somebody oh, told me that. Me. Somebody told me that. And it's a long old trip. It's not round the corner, is it? It's not, it's, you know, you might have to change somewhere. Well, Arsenal won't, they'll just go directly there. But, you know, it's it's a bit of a trip anyway. And uh, I was looking at their record and uh, guess what? Their best player was born in a place called Drama. So we don't want any theatrics, right? Theatrical appearance, um, uh, what do you call it? Dives in the penalty area and that sort of thing. But they have um, they were quarter finalists back in 98-99. So should we be afraid of them? They got into the Europa League round of 32 last season. So uh, maybe it's a comparatively easy draw when you think about Man City. They've got Real Madrid, Ajax and Borussia Dortmund. Got to feel lucky that we, uh, we didn't suffer that kind of fate. And then uh, look at Chelsea's, Chelsea's group. They've got Juventus, Shakhtar, Donetsk and that team we were talking about a lot the other day. Norseland. And then United, they've got Braga, who I wanted. Galatasaray, who I didn't want, but Alan said that's a good draw. Don't agree with that. And Cluj, we didn't have a clue about Cluj. Well, I think I think Alan did say a couple of things about it, but I was very very much afraid that we wouldn't want to go to Transylvania very much. So uh, none of the draws uh, for the English teams that great. The Coventry City at home in the Capital One Cup, we've got to be happy with that. Um, that's a good run out for the youngsters, and hopefully the youngsters can overcome. Coventry are not, not the strongest of teams. How are they doing, Alan, this, this season, Coventry? Are they doing well? Because they're sort of around your neck of the woods when you when you pop back to England or swarm back, as you like to do. How good are Coventry? Tell us. Rubbish. But they're better than Birmingham when they beat in the cup in the week. Oh, I see. So anything... Who's their, who's their star man? Anyone, anyone that we should be looking out for? There's no Japanese players... No, just yet. I think uh, Cyril Regis, uh, um, Hutchinson. You've gone back a little bit too far. A bit of a time traveller is Alan. <laughs> so Sorry, I, I don't jump know. out the Tardis Cuts. and get get with the get with the now. All right, he's gone. <laughs> I shouldn't have upset him. <laughs> Took him out of his little time bubble. But um, but yeah. Um, anyway, I I feel quietly confident that we're gonna we're gonna progress through this through this not very tough group. Uh, but anyway, let's let's not let's not get complacent, eh? But uh, let's not get complacent about Theo Walcott either, because um, there are reports that Arsene Wenger's had a word in Theo's ear, and Theo's sounds to me like a gentleman's agreement that he's going to stay. And uh, I don't have a lot of faith in these sort of agreements because uh, look what happened with Cesc Fabregas. Uh, Peter Hillwood said he got a gentleman's agreement with Barcelona, but but in the end, of course, Barcelona put a bid in for for Cesc and off he went. So. If that's what gentlemen's agreements are about, I don't really want any of them. And uh, I think if if I was in uh, if I were in uh, Arsene Wenger's position, I'd be thinking about selling Theo Walcott. The Daily Mirror claimed that Theo was actually dropped for the Stoke game, and his chin was on the floor. 
That's that's what they're saying. His chin was on the floor. He was so upset, and he loves Arsenal to bits, which is good to hear. But uh, is it going to make any difference to his uh, to his agents, who uh, I feel will want to whisk him off, either either as soon as possible, or certainly certainly next summer? Because if he does go next summer, I think I'm not mistaken in thinking the agent the agents will end up getting more money because he'll get a bigger signing on fee, as he'll be a free agent. So. Um, that's what I see is, I mean, if Arsenal continue with his stance of of letting Theo stay without signing a new deal, he's going to be off, and that will be that. But um, anyway, hopefully, hopefully, there's there's something that I've overlooked there. Perhaps uh, perhaps there's some compensation uh, due because of his age. But then, of course, next year he'll be 24, and then I think it's only up until the age of 23 where you get the compensation. So who knows? But there's been talk. There's a short-term deal being done. With uh, with the player, again, I'm not I'm not having any of that because because where where are the details, and and I think the deal was agreed rather than done. So what does that mean? Not very much in my opinion. Also, not very much um, is what we've done in the transfer market over the last few days. Although we of course we brought in those three excellent players who haven't managed to gel just yet. But uh, one player we have signed apparently is Dejan Ilyev. He's a Macedonian youth international, 17 years of age, a goalkeeper. We we're all pleased we've got a goalkeeper, but we were looking for somebody a little bit older than that, perhaps someone with a bit of experience. But this guy comes in from FK Belasica, and he's been linked with Kievo as well. I'm not quite sure what the connection is there. Other deals that might happen, I don't think so, but they might, and I, I feel I feel I have a duty to tell you about them. Daniel Sturridge, an inquiry has been made by Arsenal. Um, to see if we can get him in on loan, but Chelsea want £15 million pounds for him, so sounds like a bit of a stumbling block there. <laughs> and then Michael Wessian is another possibility. Now, who would have thought we'd get Yossi Ben Yun from Chelsea last season on loan? Not me, that's for sure. Well, anyway, we've apparently made inquiries about Michael Essien, who's not getting a look in at the moment, so possibly he could be on the move to Arsenal on loan. I think that's a bit more of a goer than Daniel Sturridge. Um, what else have we got? Talk Sport are running a story whereby they think Arsenal could sign six players, yet about three or four of them play in the same position. So it sounds a tad unlikely, to put it mildly. The players being Johan Kabay, who was um, tipped by me to become an Arsenal player. I'm not quite sure why, just because I thought he was a good player. A bit like Olivier Giroud. I was the first one on that. Surprise, surprise. Anyway, Kabai is going to cost 15 million apparently. 15 million seems to be the going rate for everyone. Then there's Etienne uh, Capou of Toulouse, who plays in the same position. And then there's Jan Mvila, who we've talked about endlessly from Ren, plays in the same position. So that's three central midfielders. There's no way we're going to buy three that play in the same position. Then there's uh, Chekon Kuyati, who's a, a six foot four inch defender from Anderlecht. Can't see that one happening. Having seen Andelect in pre-season, no one really impressed. Uh, Fernando Llorente, of course, of Athletic Bilbao. He's been linked with everyone. Uh, wouldn't mind seeing him come to Arsenal. Can't see it happening, though. And then there's Milo, whose uh, full name is Islam Ramadan. I thought it was a wind-up to begin with because, you know, it's like being called... What's it like being called Bible Christianity or something? But being, anyway, being, Milo, called, being called Milo is like being called hot chocolate, isn't it? Oh yeah, the Milo bit. Milo. <laughs> Hello, Nestle. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we had the old Kit Kat adverts yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. Nestle, Milo, mm. sounds like a, a match made in heaven for sponsorship, doesn't well, it? Wow. Milo with his name on the front of his shirt and on the back of his shirt. I didn't realise you'd pop in or swarm by at this moment. Uh, just as, a, as I was about to say, I'm about to say goodbye almost. Oh, bye. Well, not Can yet, we not yet. Jason, like no, no I think you should, <laughs> just while I mention that. Milo is a left back. Who could give Kieran Gibbs a run for his money? Did you see Milo in the Olympics? Playing no, but he saw it in the convenience store, isn't it? Oh, yeah. well, that's good. That's good. At least um, <laughs> you've given our advertisers what we don't have a mention. So what else have I got? I haven't really got anything else because we talked about it oh, yesterday. Really? So you're off, and, and so will I be. And uh, Andy Carroll's not going to be an Arsenal player because... This is for uh, Andy Carroll. Here you go, mate. 50 quid. Uh -huh. Because he's now gone to West Ham on loan, so that's um, that's not very good news, is it? Unless you don't like Andy Andy Carroll, but I personally do. I think it's great. Anyway, until the next time, up the Gunners.